Good afternoon, traders. I uh, hope you can hear me. Hope you can see me. Uh, welcome to joining us for the next of the Trading Spotlight uh, webinar series, uh, where we're going to be talking about uh, another trading uh, strategies for beginner session. Um, I think this is part four. Okay, what I think I'll do is I'll do like maybe one a month, all right? Just always give like one simple trading strategy that new traders could take away and uh, utilize in their own uh, trading. Um, great to have you all here. Okay, if you're watching this uh, live, that's fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, well, you can put your questions into the uh, chat box. If you're watching this later on the uh, YouTube recording, then uh, once again, it's great to have you here. Ensure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you uh, find the session useful. Uh, and if you want to put comments in there, please feel uh, free to do so. We'll be sure to come back and uh, answer them for you. Uh, and, you know, maybe if also if you have suggestions for topics that you'd like to see us cover in the future, be sure to put them uh, in there. Uh, we'll also have at the end of this session, you'll find that there will be a very quick little feedback form that will be sent electronically to you. If you'd be so kind enough to take 30 seconds just to fill that in, okay, that helps us enormously. Helps us enormously make sure that we're giving you the right kind of content uh, and also gives you another opportunity to sort of mention topics you'd like to see in the future. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, switch across to the, uh, the slides, all right, and uh, talk about, you know, part four of uh, trading strategy for beginners in 2022. Just bring up my uh, screen here, okay? Hopefully, bang. Da, da, da. <coughs> super. All right, super. So, as I said, uh, I hope you can hear me. Hope you can uh, um, see me. Hope you can see the uh, slides as well. Tina says hello. Hello, Tina. You're very, very uh, welcome. Welcome to you all, really, for this simple trading tactics for beginners in 2022, part uh, part four. Um, as I always say, I appreciate that, you know, we have a, a, a broad range of people who join us for our sessions from complete beginners to traders with, you know, some experience under their belt. You're all very welcome. There'll be something all for you today. But as I said, in this particular session, you know, we are more focused towards complete uh, beginners. I also recognize that we have a, a real global audience here who join us for our uh, Admiral Trading Spotlight webinars. Uh, you are all very, very welcome. We here at Admirals hope you're all safe and sound and well, having a, a fabulous 2022, despite all of the uh, uh, rather eventful uh, uh, sort of occasions that we have going on around us. We hope you're all safe and well, and we uh, thank you for joining us here today. So uh, remember, Admirals are a uh, Forex and CFD broker with, you know, sort of a global reach and uh, local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the uh, most popular trading products and allowing you to engage with markets on both the MT4 and MT5 platform. If you have any questions about Admirals, please uh, get in touch with your account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to help guide you. Also, as uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, if you uh, want to sort of, you know, see more of the content that uh, uh, we create here for the uh, the education section at uh, Admirals, where myself and my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, you'll find that you can find it all on the uh, Admirals YouTube channel. You can see it there at Admirals Global. You'll find that this uh, video itself will be, you know, put on there in the next day or two, uh, and you'll find a whole, you know, plethora of uh, content there that we've created over the last couple of years. Fantastic uh, content in there. Lots there to keep you uh, uh keep you entertained and educated uh, so be sure to sort of check that out and add it to your uh, add it to your sort of subscribe list so we're going to talk about tr new trading strategies for beginners all right part four and what we're going to talk about is a simple one called a three bar reversal we'll talk about what is it where and how do they uh, set up for us what you need to be aware of when you're using them how do we actually trade them uh, and then if there's time at the end, what we'll do is we'll just check them out quickly on a live market. So be sure to stay to the end where we'll be able to sort of uh, uh, give you a little bit of insight. OK, I always appreciate that when we do some of you know, the educational content, it always helps if we can see, you know, how they're showing up in live markets. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is uh, Paul. I've traded for many years. OK, traded for myself, traded for funds, traded for individuals. Uh, primarily, I like to trade FX indices and commodities. They tend to be my uh, preferred uh, uh, asset class. Uh, for my longer term trading, I tend to be a trend trader. Uh, and for my very short intraday trader, I tend to be a kind of reversal trader. So. Simple trading tactics for beginners in 2022, part four. As the, as the slide says, you know, in previous sessions, okay, we've looked at simple tactics like the fiery cross, 
we looked at false breakouts. And last one, I think we looked at the FTR, the fail to return, just as simple potential trade setups. What we said, you know, at the time at, uh, at the, in the previous session and, and still holds true for today is, you know, it, it's normally impossible to capture the start of every new trend. OK, sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. OK, you know, and, and you shouldn't, you know, beat yourself up about that. All traders have that. OK, but, you know, what you might do, despite your best wishes, is that you might not be able to capture the start of a new trend. So what we are looking for is, well, you know, what kind of ways could we join trends in a very clear, simple, easy manner. And many traders are looking for, you know, just a simple mechanical trade setup that will allow them to engage with these markets. And that's what we're going to discuss today. We'll discuss a simple setup that traders can take away and use in these situations. As I said, you know, when you're a new trader, okay, you know, there is a plethora of uh, different trading strategies and tactics that you can utilize for your own trading. And what I'm going to do in this kind of in this kind of series within Trading Spotlight is just give you some very simple setups that new beginners can sort of take away, look at, find, work with, and hone to their own particular trading style. So, as I said. What we're going to talk about today is a very simple setup called the three bar reversal setup. Uh, you know, what is it? Well, not unsurprisingly, ladies and gentlemen, it's a mechanical trade setup that is created over three bars or three candles. What it is good about this is that it is time frame and instrument agnostic, right? Meaning that, you know, you can use it across the spectrum. So whether you're, uh, you know, an intraday trader on the DAX or you're a long-term position holder on gold, let's say, for example, this setup, okay, you know, is, as I say, is time frame and instrument agnostic. Once you see it and recognize it, you know, once you're able to hone the best examples of it, well, then basically you can utilize it across, you know, any time frame and any instrument. And hopefully that helps you, okay, because I appreciate that everybody has their own particular preferred sort of style of, uh, of, of operating. Today, I am going to focus mostly on the FX market because that's you know, the, the main one that I trade. But as I said, the setup you'll find across, you know, all sorts of all asset classes. Uh, and actually, it's the location of where the three bar sets up. It creates the conditions for the trade or not, okay? You know, it, it, you could, uh, I suppose, just mechanically trade every single sort of three bar setup that you see. But what I have discovered and found, okay, over through my own uh, trading is that, you know, it's particular where it particularly sets up, that is what actually helps in terms of me uh, recognizing the setup uh, and actually choosing the, the sort of, let's say, the, the, the better setups uh, within that. So, what do we look for? You know, how do we, you know, look at it? What can we work out? You know, what kind of time frame should we look at it? All right. Well, you know, if you're a swing trader, you'll find that these setups, you know, they will show up on things like the weekly chart, the daily chart, the four hourly chart. I'd even say that they'll, they'll show up on the monthly chart, but they would just be very, very rare indeed. If you're an intraday trader, well, you know, what you're going to be looking at is you're going to be looking at these on things like the 60 minutes, 30 minutes, the 15 and the five minutes. And the setup is quite simple, all right? You know, in terms of our chart setup, it's, it's kind of a pretty standard one that I utilize uh, most days, which you'll see me using a very uh, a blue 20 period moving average, a 50 uh, simple period moving average, and a 200 period moving average. And, and almost like the first filter is, is that they should be in alignment, okay? What I mean by that is that, you know, for a, let's say for a bullish setup, Okay, a buying setup price should be above the 20, which is above the 50, which is above the 200 period moving average. So if you think about it, we've already got a filter in there that's kind of giving us a filter that, you know, that market is likely to be in a, uh, a trend already. And on the flip side, okay, on the bearish side, what we're looking at is we want alignment in terms of we want price to be below the 20, which is below the 50 period moving average, which is below the 200 period moving average for a sell. Once again, that's just another filter that is there, just helping just confirm that there is a, a trend movement in place. Uh, you know, and this is a, an opportunity we're going to look at in terms of how we uh, how we basically you know look to engage with that particular trend. So step one, all right, a little bit as we've just discussed, step one, define, is there a trend, okay? And we're using price structure and the kind of moving average fan for that one. For example, you know, price is above the 20 period moving average, which is above the 50 period moving average to find a, an uptrend. So just look at the old drawing tool up here, okay? 
So, you know, in these example, price is above the 20, which is the blue, which is also above the red 50 and the green 200 is I think, way down here. OK, that's what we're looking for. That's what we need to, you know, to sort of experience first. And then what we're looking for is we're looking for a, a pullback to, to enter the long trade. So as price kind of pulls back towards, in this case, the 20 and the 50 period moving average, that is the first uh, that's the first element we are looking for in terms of defining the setup. Step two is, you know, in an uptrend, price retraces towards support, and that support can be either dynamic in terms of the moving averages, so the 20, the 50, which is what I particularly like, or it may be it's static, okay, maybe it's static, so maybe it's a, a horizontal level of support resistance, or maybe it's a trend line, or maybe it's a big round number, right, but all of those are valid, but personally, I prefer to sort of see it bounce off dynamic uh, dynamic support, uh, which would be effectively, you know, a moving average, either the 20 or the 50. You could also use the 200, but, you know, in my own experience, sort of, you know, a pullback towards the 20 or the 50 period or into that kind of region, it is actually, you know, that's that's where my preferred settles would be. And that's what I was saying. OK, you know, it's it's where we see it set up. That is where I actually sort of define it as, you know, at its most, uh, the, the highest probability of it being a successful setup for you. Step three, okay. What we're looking at is once price has reached the support level, let's pull back to it. What we're just looking for is very simple, right? We're gonna have two seller's bars, all right? And two red bars, followed by a buyer bar, okay? That's it, all right? You can see here, price has been trending up, it's been above the 20 period moving average, and it's been above the 50 period moving average. Then price retraces, we can see it retrace back to the 20 period moving average. And what we see here is we get one and then we get two. We get two seller bars followed by a green buyer bar. OK, two seller bars followed by a uh, buyer bar. That's it. Three bar reversal. OK, but, you know, it's quite simple. It's quite mechanical, which means, you know, either if it doesn't do this, right, well, there is no setup whatsoever. All right. OK, what we need is your know, price to we pull back to you know, a, a level of support. In this case, it's the blue 20 period moving average. And we have basically two seller bars followed by a green buyer bar. That's that's it, okay? That is our setup. And what we're gonna be doing is gonna be looking to now use the allies as a pullback. That is the opportunity for us to now sort of rejoin what we hope will be the sort of dominant trend re-exerting itself. So, as I said, you know, the most simplistic view is two red bars followed by a green bar at support. That is it. And, and I appreciate that for beginners, if you're just starting out, that can actually be enormously helpful because it just makes it very clear, very unambiguous, okay, very, you know, very simple to detect. What I will say, though, is that, you know, I personally, okay, through experience, have found that, you know, if the green buyer bar is something like a, a pin bar, or an engulfing candle, or an inside bar, or perhaps a doji or spinning top, then that gives me more confidence, all right? That gives me more confidence. So in this particular case, you've got, you know, once it's come back, you've had your two seller bars, followed by, you know, the third bar is a, is a green, um, it's a green bullish buyer's bar, which is also, okay, it's also a bullish pin bar as well. That gives me more confidence, right? That gives me more confidence, okay? So if you don't know what a pin bar is or an engulfing candle or an inside bar or a, you know, a dojo spinning top, that's why I suggest you go back to the uh, uh, Admiral's YouTube channel and you will go through and you will find that there are, you know, myself and my colleagues, we've done specific sort of videos just on those individual price action setups, okay? So as I said, my suggestion is, you know, you don't really know them or you, you'd like to know more about them to understand them better, Go and sort of plug yourself into that. Okay, there's plenty of, as I say, great content in there that will help educate you to uh, to put that in uh, in place. But as I said, most simplistic view: two red bars followed by a green bar at support. But really, I actually like the green bar bar to be a pin bar. Okay, an engulfing candle, an inside bar, a spinning top, etc. Okay, doji spinning top. You know, though, that's what gives me more confidence when I see that um, when I see that occurring. So step four, what are we going to do? Okay, well, you know, once we've identified our trade, what we're looking to do on the most basic setup, okay, is we look to enter one pip plus the spread 
above the high of the buyer bar. So it's gonna be one pip plus the spread above the buyer the high bar. Our stop loss, our stop loss, it goes two pips beneath the low of the three bars, okay? Which in this case, the low of the three bars is the green bar. So our stop loss, our stop loss goes there, okay? Two pips beneath the low of the, you know, the lowest of those three bars. Our target, okay? For those who like to use target, our target is one and a half times our trade risk. So, you know, the difference between our entry and a stop loss, you can project that forward and your target will be there. One and a half times your trade risk, okay? So, you know, if there's 30 pips between your entry and your stop loss, right? Well, then your target is going to be 45 pips, okay? One and a half times your trade risk, right? So, you know, um, for, as I said, for completely new traders, this makes it almost quite simple, quite mechanical, almost sort of fire and forget in many ways in terms of the uh, in terms of the trade setup, okay? You know, this is, after all, supposed to be about simple trade setups for uh, for beginners and you know this is uh you know this is uh something that is with a little bit of practice is something that can you know can be easily traded by most um by most new traders so that is kind of let's say the standard setup i know some people like to utilize a trailing boss uh trailing stop loss and if you wish to do that, okay, if you wish to do that, well, then what you can do is you can use a three bar trailing stop, namely that effectively, you know, once we're in the uh, the trade, every time a new candle closes, our stop goes beneath the low of the last three candles, okay? So every time the kind of trade moves up, every time the trade kind of uh, basically continues like that, well, what you're doing is, you know, you're effectively just looking at, you know, just trailing your stop beneath the low of the last three candles until you're stopped out. Sometimes that will allow you to sort of stay with a, you know, a new trend and actually sort of drive and actually sort of generate a really very healthy reward to risk. Other times, just because if maybe it's a choppy market, you know, that you might not sort of generate as much as if you just used a, a simple one and a half uh, times target. As I said, I know lots of people like to use trading stops. Uh, personally, for me, for my intraday training, I, I tend to prefer using a target myself. You know, I'm a, an ex-military man. OK, I like to hit a target. OK, it's kind of simple. It also allows me to sort of, you know, almost kind of like sandbox my uh, trades. Okay, I almost fire and forget the trades. All right. That sort of suitalizes my, that sort of suits my trading style. But I do recognize other people may well be different. So here's a, a couple of little uh, trade management rules for us to, to follow as we work our way through. Here's the, uh, just make note of these, okay? They are important. If the trade has not triggered after three candles, then take the trade off, okay? If it hasn't triggered after three trades, so let's say, you know, we've identified here, we've put our order, we've put our order in here above the high, but actually price continues to move down, all right, for another three candles, then basically take the trade off, okay? And the reason being is because what we're expecting is we want price to come back and bounce off that we want sort of momentum to re-exert itself okay the dominant trend to re-exert itself and if it isn't doing that well then we don't want to be in that we don't want to be in that trade secondly for the standard entry if price continues and then closes below the low the low three bars before your entry order is triggered take it off so once again let's say we've identified here you know one two three we put our order in here okay and our stop loss up here but actually what happens is price continues to sort of you know, move down. It actually trades beneath where our stop loss would have been, you know, if, if the trade had triggered. Well, then basically, you know, we take the, you know, take the trade off, okay? Take the trade off, okay? It clearly isn't doing what we want it to do. It clearly hasn't made its mind. It clearly wants a much of a deeper uh, uh, pullback, you know, or it might actually have even sort of, you know, reversed completely, in which case just take the trade off. And what we also say is, you know, once the trade has triggered, let the trade play out. Okay, and what I mean by that is, let's say that it's clear off. Let's say that you know we have identified our entry. Okay, we've identified our stop loss. We've identified our target. You know, once the trade is triggered, what we say is just let the trade play out. It's almost like fire and forget. Okay, which for many new traders is actually a good exercise in itself. And the reason being is once a trade is triggered, what you'll find is that, you know, if you're watching it, if you're excited by it, you know, you'll basically, you know, you'll be feeling a little impulsive. You know, if you see the trade going in your direction, you'll want to grab at the profits, okay? You'll want to interfere with the trade. 
Whereas, you know, utilize this as a, uh, as a simple, like okay, a disciplined trading exercise that, you know, you've identified the setup, you've, you know, uh, position size co accordingly, your entry and your stop loss are at the right place. So is your target and you just let the trade play out. Okay. It either flies or it dies. Okay. So that's the, that's the way we, uh, that's the way we look at it like uh, that. Now, what I uh, suggest to, to traders here is that, you know, set yourself a challenge. Here's your trading challenge, ladies and gentlemen. Look to do 20 of these trades, all right? Look to do 20 of these trades and then evaluate, okay? Evaluate, you know, how successful was it? Were there any particular, were there any particular, uh, um, you know, sort of themes that emerged from the data, all right? So, you know, for a standard trade, all right, depending upon, you know, a little bit, depending upon what particular asset class, what particular time frame. What generally look at is, you know, you look at for a sort of a kind of hit ratio between 48 to 62 percent. All right. That will change based upon, you know, how strong the trends are in. It will also depend on what time frame and asset classes. But as a general rule, we kind of tend to nudge around there. You know, and what you'll find is, you know, if you if you, you know, generate 48 to 62 percent kind of hit rate and you're actually utilizing a one and a half return risk to reward. OK, well, then, you know, what you should be able to start to work out is that, you know, you, you are uh, on the side of positive expectancy. OK, and that's uh, that's, you know, that in itself is demonstrating that, you know, you you have the uh, you have the beginnings of a, of a trading business. OK, uh, and that's, you know, that's where we want to try and get to. It's it's not about. You know, it's not about trying to, you know, just pick one fantastic, fabulous trade. It doesn't really work like that. What it is, is it's about being consistent, okay? It's about delivering the right performance over a sample of trade, which might be 20, 50, 100, 200, 500 trades. That's the way, that's the way it works for you, okay? That's where you, that's what we see. And the more data you get, you know, the more accurate your kind of your insight and feedback will be in terms of how you can look to, to work with that. So that was the bullish setup, okay? That was the long setup. And suppose the question you can ask yourself is, you know, based upon that, do you think you could trade that? All right, do you think you could identify those kind of setups? Was there anything in there that was, you know, particularly difficult or particularly complex or particularly, you know, ambiguous, all right? Okay, just ask yourself those questions. Hopefully, you'll be able to start to recognize that actually, no, you know, it's a kind of a simple setup that you could, that you could work with and utilize quite, quite easily. Let's have a look at on the uh, on the short side, shall we? Let's have a little look at that. Okay, so the setup is you know it's kind of exactly reversed for for the you know, for the bearish side for selling opportunities. But now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking for two buyer bars followed by a seller bar. Okay, at resistance. So uh, here we go. As you can see here in the example here, you know price is you know beneath the price is here is beneath the twenty and beneath the fifty. And then what we see is you now we get one green bar, two green bar, three, a third green bar. Okay, I'm sorry, a third bar, the, which is a seller bar. Okay, two greens followed by a red. That's it. Okay, and it's most simplistic for traders. Right, that's that's what we're looking for. Right, that's what you that's what you're wanting to 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 see. Okay, as I said, you know, it's kind of literally you know no signal, no trade. That's why it helps. For new traders is because, as I said, it's a little bit, there's, you know, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit mechanical, okay, almost like a little bit mechanical. Once you've identified, you know, the first filter in terms of the trade being, you know, the, the market being in a particular trend, then basically does it pull back? And if it pulls back, you know, does that pull back in this case, come into resistance with two green bars followed by a red bar? That's actually all we need to look at. That's all we need to know. So, you know, here's um, a couple of examples here. I've got just a few, you know, a few examples from, you know, from um, different instruments, okay, different time frames, different kind of setups in terms of just wanting to, you know, show them, you know, they're not always pretty, okay, you know, it's not always there. Sometimes it can be kind of scruffy, but you know, the the setup is still uh, the setup is still uh, valid for us, okay. So, you know, this is, you know, this was a trade on pound against the uh, Japanese yen. 15 minute chart intraday trade okay uh, price had got here you know you can see the price you know once it's here it's beneath the beneath the 20 beneath the 50 okay beneath the 200 what happens then is then we get you know we get one green bar one well, we get one green bar two green bar we actually get a second green bar here it might look like a doji but actually it was a green bar followed by okay followed by a seller's bar okay 
And not only that, that seller's buy, you know, it's a rejection candle, it's a pin bar, okay? So what we have is, you know, it has met the, uh, it has met the criteria for our trade setup, nice and uh, nice and simple. And so invariably what we're looking at is, you know, we have our uh, stop, okay, beneath the, uh, the lows, all right, our, uh, sorry, our entry beneath the lows, our stop, you know, at one pip plus the spread above the, the high. And actually what we can see is that uh, the trade triggers and it runs quite nicely. Here's the, uh, here's the kind of interesting point uh, for us. Uh, what actually happens is it, it gets to our target towards the end of the day, but we're not taken out just on the spread, all right? It has actually done. Uh, and what actually happens is the, the, the price actually goes sideways because we're going into the overnight Asian session before it actually triggers our uh, triggers our exit, all right? Uh, sometime overnight. So as I said, sometimes you show, you know, it's not pretty, you know, you, you know, trading isn't always just, you know, beautiful examples. Sometimes, you know, you can have a, you know, a bit of a scruffy setup, but actually the trade plays out. Sometimes it doesn't always go straight to your target. You know, you have to, you have to work with it. Okay. And that's just, you know, that's an example of, you know, just fire and forget the trade. Okay. You know, you've got your stop loss in place. You've got your uh, entry, you know, where your target is. Sometimes, as I said, sometimes it'll move quite very nicely and quickly to your target. We always love those kind of trades, but that doesn't always happen as often as we would like. And actually what we can see here is that, you know, it took actually a bit of time, all right, to get to the target, but it still hit its target, did its job, all right, generated its one and a half, you know, reward to risk on the trade. That's what we're there for, okay? Remember, it's, it's not about the outcome of one trade, it's about the outcome of samples of trades. Um, here's an example on a different of a different style. So this is, the pound against the Swiss franc, but this is, here we go, this is on the daily chart, uh, and hopefully you can see that, you know, the price has been in an uptrend, all right, okay, it's above the 20, it's above the 50 and the 200, uh, and actually what happens is, you know, we can see that it basically pulls back to an area that has not only the, the kind of daily 20 premium and average, there's also a, a level of resistance which becomes support, and what we can see is, you know, we get, you know, candle one, candle two, Candle three, which also happens to be a bullish engulfing candle, right? And then actually what we see is that over the next few days, the price sort of moves away and moves away quite nicely to hitting its target in the uh, in the end. So, you know, as I said, I'm going to show you different uh, different instruments, different time frames. The whole idea being to just, just give you an examples of, you know, of how the kind of trade plays out and how it can actually, uh, how, you know, you can utilize it regardless of how your own particular trading style is occurring. Um, here's an example from this is actually it's from a few years ago, but um, but, you know, it's still relevant because actually, you know, I just wanted to utilize it as a way and means to sort of show a, uh, you know, what can actually happen when when a market gets into a very good trend. Uh, and you know, this is the Australian dollar against the US dollar. And, and you know, uh, those of you will know me how I particularly look to operate as a swing trader will know that you know, I'm always looking to buy strength and uh, sell weakness in markets. And at that particular time. The Aussie dollar was very weak and the US dollar was very strong. Uh, and what we had was, you know, price, you know, started out okay. It's coming in, it was over the summer months. Excuse me. Uh, and what we had was that, uh, you know, we were in a very strong downtrend on the Aussie against dollar. Uh, but what we saw is, you know, we got pulled back. We pulled back one here, we had two green bars, followed by, you know, a red bar, which was a, an indic, uh, which was a, a doji candle, uh, and price sort of kind of moved its way down. Price then pulled back once again. Okay, this was the second setup. Two green bars followed by a red bar. Okay, the price triggered. Okay, and then it worked its way down longer term. Then basically it set up again. You can see it set up again here. Okay, on the sort of setup three, whereby we had two green bars followed by a red seller bar. The price effectively moved down, but it wasn't over. It pulled back. Okay, pull back to the 20 where we had kind of setup number four, where invariably what we had was two green bars followed by a red seller bar before price moved down. Price moved back again. It then actually put in, uh, here we go, put in, excuse my uh, uh, right, put in setup five, okay, before it actually sort of moved its way down again. And then it rallied up again once more. Uh, and actually, you know, we just finished here, okay, with, with setup number six. So that was on the daily chart over, you know, over what was effectively sort of three months, okay. You know, you had all those setups occurring that were in line with what was the, the kind of the bigger trend, which was invariably Aussie weakness and US dollar strength, you know. And I just, as I said, I just wanted to show lots of different examples to give you uh, an insight and an understanding of uh, invariably, you know, what is uh, what is possible and what is uh, what is available once you're actually able to understand the particular setup. 
Um, here, here's uh, you know another example. This is on the short side. And this is the euro against the Japanese yen. It's on the uh, the weekly chart here, uh, and you can see already you know, from the start. You know, it's the weekly chart for months. Price has been in quite a nice downtrend there, hasn't it? It's just kind of you know just moving its way down. And then what do we get? We get you know one, then two green bars followed by a, you know a, a third bar, which is a seller bar, which is also you know an inside bar. Okay, respecting that twenty period moving average uh, before price kind of moves down again doesn't it it actually pulls back here okay and you can probably see that you know here we get we get you know one two green bars followed by a seller bar and you'd be saying well why didn't you take that pull well and the reason is is to just look at the size of that seller bar okay the the seller bar is you know it's, it's huge it's already it's already kind of made its move all right and by the time you know you're having to sort of sell here with your stop loss above you know the, your trade risk becomes very very big indeed now invariably of course in this particular you know example it does actually make its way and would have hit your one and a half reward to risk target but you don't know that at the time okay and what we're looking to do is preferably is to just have you know you know a nice tight trade risk because that gives us the best opportunity to hit our you know one and a half uh, reward to risk target if you're going to use uh, a specific target set Um, here's another one on the uh, Aussie against the US dollar again. This is the 60 minute chart. Okay, it's in a you know it's in a kind of a nice. You can see it's, in, it's just in a nice little uptrend there. Uh, and what we see is you know it's in that, and you know you can see actually for yourself it keeps as it keeps moving. Your price never moves in a straight line. Price pulls back to the 20 period moving average. You've got two red bars followed by a green buyer bar, which is of course you know uh, also a pin bar. Price then sets up again. You've got two seller bars followed by a buyer bar. Price rallies up. Price comes back. It is actually two seller bars followed by a green buyer bar. Price rallies. Price comes back. Price puts in one, two, uh, two seller bars followed by a green buyer bar, which is also kind of a like nice little inside bar. And price rallies. Okay. So hopefully, you know, you can just see that. You know, as I said, when you get into a good trend, you know, you know, price never moves in a straight line. Those of you who've traded for a while will know this, right? Price never moves in a straight line. It tends to zigzag, and you know, when it puts in a zigzag like that. Where it keeps pulling back to the 20 period moving average and also starts printing three bar reversals in those cases you know two seller bars followed by a buyer bar the buyer bar also being as you can see in those examples things like you know a nice uh, pin bar rejection candle okay inside bars etc that's what gives us the trigger to, to take the trade okay and as i said with a one and a half reward to risk ratio okay as a as a target you know as i said you can almost kind of like set and forget the trade and let it let it run its course okay and as i said that can that is where you can also help build consistency and discipline in your trading by just basically helping you just do those setups nice and simply whenever you uh, whenever you see them Uh, and here's a couple of examples on the pound against the US dollar on the uh, the daily chart here. What we have is uh, pricing. Now, price was moving up. Price was moving up and crossing above the, the moving averages. And then what we had is two seller bars followed by a green buyer's bar, okay, which is a strong rejection candle. But then once again, sets it up again, comes back to the 20 period moving average. Uh, and then we have two seller bars followed by a green buyer bar, which is a little bit of a spinning top. Okay, It's just inside bars, spinning top. A day, not the next day, but the day after that, it triggers and off it runs as well. There, okay. So, you know, it, you know, when you're trading this, okay, on let's say in the daily and the weekly charts, even maybe on the four hour charts, you know, you, you don't have to be there all day to, to wait and watch as if you were, let's say, going to try and trade it on maybe, let's say, the five minute chart. What you're in a position to do is, you know, on a daily chart, is it's very quick, just a little bit of time at the start of your trading day to just go through and see, you know, were there any of these particular setups that occurred? And if they were, well, then can, you know, I'll be able for you to basically, you know, to, to put them onto your trade list and, and take the trade and, and ride the trend where you can. You know, it's, uh, you know, for longer term trading, it's what it means is that, you know, as I said, you don't have to be there, uh, you know, watching every single tick. It means that you can take a little bit of time to sort of recognize, you can work out, you know, you, you'll already get an idea that price is in a trend, price is pulling back to, in, a, in an uptrend, it's pulling back to support. Can I actually see a way to, to basically sort of, you know, get on board that and, uh, and ride that trade as, as, you know, as long as I possibly can. Uh, and more examples here. This is now the euro yen on the uh, four hour chart. You know, you, hopefully you've gotten the, the picture already by now, all right, that basically, you know, price is, you know, uh, above the 20s, above the 50, okay, we're in an uptrend, price pulls back, 
and it pulls back okay here we pull it back two red bars followed by a green uh buy a bar which is also you know bullish you know it's a bullish pin bar uh, and price starts to its journey off but actually it comes back again sets up you know here we get two seller bars okay followed by a green buyer's bar which is a really strong engulfing candle and, and price rallies again okay so two trade setups you know within probably within what's that you know within kind of a day and a half of each other before we get you know a strong move okay to the upside which allows us to hit our uh, kind of you know our one and a half uh you know reward to rest trades there and suddenly there you go within the week you know your plus three r on those uh for those two trades okay and that's a you know that's a solid way for you to solid way for you to be able to uh to to, to trade nothing nothing not to like about um simple setups like that ladies and gentlemen so you know as we just come to finish off before we look at the live charts you know there's just always there's points to note remember the the three bar reversal is is quite a simple mechanical pullback trading tactic one define if there is a trend right price has to be above the 20 and above the 50 wait for a pullback all right to into support or up to resistance you know if we're in a bullish environment okay what we're looking for is we need to see two seller bars followed by a buyer bar all right and for a short we need to you know sort of two buyer bars followed by a seller bar and it's where that setup appears that is key as i said i particularly like to see them bouncing off the, the moving averages but you will see these setups bouncing off horizontal levels of support and resistance even bouncing off big round numbers bouncing off perhaps you know uh, uh, trend lines or levels of uh, of of structure and uh, as i said remember the, the kind of you know what we look at is for that third candle if that third candle is something like a pin bar or an engulfing candle okay or an inside bar or perhaps a spinning top or a doji those candles give me more confidence okay when i see those occurring at let's say for example the 20 period moving average that can actually you know that's a that's a that's a very solid setup okay it's a highest probability of version of that kind of setup uh, and that's what we're looking to, to basically get on board and trade So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, right, the, the three bar reversal is a simple mechanical pullback trading tactic. What's important is to define you know, where that three bar reversal occurs. We need to occur it as part of a pullback in an already you know, identified trend at a suitable level of support or resistance, which provides us with a confluence of events. All right. Many of you will have joined me over the, uh, the years doing this. We recognize I always like to talk about any confluence of events gives you your trade. It can be used across all instruments and all time frames. And you know, we've got a yeah, we've got a few minutes left, so we've got enough time just for a few minutes just to quickly check it uh, across on our live markets, which is uh, which is what we will do. So, uh, if just to finish off there, if you've got any questions, you can get in touch with us at Admiral Markets. You can see there contact us at global at admiralmarkets.com. You'll be able to watch this video and all the others on either, as I said, the YouTube channel, you know, at the forward slash admirals global or facebook.com forward slash admiral globals as well. So, uh, you know, I hope you've uh, found that useful. If you're a beginner trader, I hope that just gives you something that you, know, you can just take away and start to work on to basically identify and utilize in your own trading style. If you just bear with us a moment, what we'll do is we'll just we'll we'll just switch across to the uh, to the Admiral's platform and have a little look about what's going on on the on the live markets or what's been going on recently. So just bear with us a moment there. Okay, so uh, here we go. Let me just move this out of the way a little bit. Maybe move it around. So hopefully you can still hear me. Hopefully you can still see both me and the actual slides itself. Um, yeah, here's a good example. All right, here's a nice example. This is my uh, Sterling profile, something I, I watch and trade quite a bit. And uh, bang, here we go. Here is, let's move this around. Okay, here we go, is the uh, pound against Canadian dollar. Okay, and, uh, you know, it, it's going to be interesting in the sense that, uh, you know, what we saw is, you know, kind of um, a nice trend down there. Okay, double bottoms, starts to move its way up. You start to see that, yeah, it's what they call power 20 there. And it's now price gets above the 50 and it comes back. And at the point where the, 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 the 20 is crossing the 50, which is also a bit of a fiery cross setup, those of you who uh, uh, have joined us for the first of these uh, particular sessions, if you haven't, it'll be in the uh, YouTube channel. You might want to go and uh, check it out. But what we get is price pulls back into that area. And what do we get? We get, you know, two seller bars followed by a, you know, a green buyer bar, which is also a bullish 
All right, it's also a bullish pin bar, and you can see for yourself that basically price fires off there quite nicely, okay, and easily hits its one and a half uh, reward to its target, okay. Excuse me. That is one a trade where in, invariably what we what would have been uh, you know on a trailing stop you know probably would have taken out there and you'd have had a great return. But that was because actually we just got a surge of momentum and that's the sort of thing that we like to uh, that's the sort of thing we like to see. Uh, where else do we have here on the uh, on the uh, on the sterling profiles app? Yep, here's next. Here's uh, the pan against the Aussie on the uh, four hour chart and uh, hopefully what maybe we can see here is is that actually you know bang. Uh, and price has started to, to move here. Okay, price was basically. Let me just zoom because because of the because we've had such strong moves that uh, we've uh, we've basically uh, moved that. Let me just move this around here a bit just to, so we can try and, uh, and let's see. Okay, so get the old drawing tool. So you know what we actually saw was. Um, you might not be able to see it there, okay, just because there's so much price action because we've had such you know, such big moves, as you can see. It is that invariably, you know, we saw price here. Price got beneath the 20, uh, beneath the prices, beneath the 20, beneath the 50, beneath the 200. We actually then had a pullback here, two green bars, followed by a seller's bar, which was also a pin bar. That itself was a very nice trade down. Uh, and then what happens is it pulls back again, doesn't it? it has, you know, that pullback consists of two, you know, green bars, followed by a seller bar. The seller bar is also a bearish pin bar. Okay, so you know, you've literally had two setups there. Uh, and as you can see, that one runs quite easily, quite easily to its one and a half rewards, which they both did. Now, of course, this is the one where, you know, you know, if you were trailing stock, well, you know, actually trailing your stock here, you, you'd have probably been taken out around about there anyway. But nevertheless, you know, there was the opportunity there, okay, to get two trades on the four hour charts, okay, just as this new kind of trend started to, to, to build itself uh, up there, okay. So, um, you know, kind of nice, you know, nice opportunities there. Uh, where else do we have? Um, yeah, here we go. I want to show this is an interesting one, okay. Um, from the uh, last week, and um, this is the pound against the Japanese yen, and uh, what we see is um, you know, price is price is in a downtrend. Okay, price is beneath the twenty, beneath the fifty. Price actually pulls back, and actually, you know, we come up to the twenty, and, and some people might have jumped in and said, "Paul, you know, you got two green bars followed by a red bearish inside bar pin bar. That's fine." Um, the problem that was the kind of last candle of the week, all right? Uh, and as you can see, then you know it closed and, and then actually it gapped down. And, and what would have happened is you you'd have probably been you'd have probably been taken in here, okay? So if it's like the last candle of the week, okay, and like a four hour job, in fact, any you know, my suggestion is you don't take the trade setup. And actually, what happened is then what happened is it, it set up again here. There's then you know two two green bars followed by a red bar. But you know, actually, what we saw was that the the, the red candle was already so big. That invariably it all it had already made its move okay some people would still take that trade personally as i said i like to keep my trade risk just a, a little bit smaller okay to give me the best opportunity to try and hit that uh, one and a half uh, to uh, one and a half reward to risk but actually what happens is you know uh, price then sets up again all right we have two green bars okay hits the 20 followed by a small red okay third candle which is a seller bar which is also very small inside bar which allows us to get a trade on and allows us to hit our one and a half reward to risk okay and as i said that's what we're looking at you know, prefer prefer the kind of the third candle okay to be a smaller sort of you know um, a smaller kind of just so i said you know, your trade risk is less which gives you the best opportunity to hit your one and a half uh, reward to risk trade target so um hope that uh hope that kind of helps just gives you a little bit of uh, a little bit of a little bit of clarity on there so so uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All right. OK, that was part four of trading strategies for beginners in 2022. And in particular, we focused on the three bar reversal there. Three bar reversal there, as hopefully you can see, is a, you know, it's a way and a means to, to give you a chance to join a trend that's already in there, a trend that's taking a little bit of a breather, it's having a little bit of a pullback. And when it sets up, OK, with those, either those kind of two red bars followed by a green bar, OK, for in a, in a bullish move, or two green bars followed by a red bar in a bearish uh, move then gives you the opportunity to sort of just join that existing trend. I hope you found that useful. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight. Hope that gives you a, a little trade setup you can go and work away with for the rest of the week, okay, and try and meld to your uh, own particular trading style. Uh, as always, you know, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading endeavours, ladies and gentlemen, and I look forward to uh, seeing you soon on the next Trading Spotlight webinar. And until that time, trade well, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>